Well, it is political deja vu in the race for the White House as 2024 is now feeling a whole lot like 2020. Following a Super Tuesday that went heavily for former President Donald Trump, Nikki Haley dropping out of the GOP race just hours later, that setting up another showdown between Biden and Trump. And here to talk about this is Democratic analyst Ed Espinoza and Matt McCoviak, chair of the Travis County Republican Party. Thanks to both of you for being here. Sure. Good to thanks. be here. So, Matt, first to you, Nikki Haley notably did not endorse Trump, saying it's up to him to earn the votes of Republicans who don't support him. So do you think Trump can unify the party again behind him without that endorsement? That's a good question. Uh, you know, the reason I think he can is that he has to. I mean, the Republican Party nominee is not going to win if the Republican Party is not unified, and that's true on both sides of the aisle. Um, these primaries tend to become personal and nasty, and uh, there are you know hurt feelings, and there's generally distance as the races are are going forward, and then after they end, people come back together. Look, Nikki Haley has the potential uh, to be uh, play a role in the Trump administration, just as she did in the past. She could be a Secretary of State candidate or something else potentially. Um, I have no doubt she does not want to see Joe Biden uh, serve another term as president, and that she deeply disagrees with him, particularly on national security policy. So they've got to figure out how to get together. The Trump team knows that. Uh, I realize that a lot of Trump's base doesn't like Nikki Haley. I understand that. But they're going to have to unify, and they will, particularly now that she's dropped out. Ed, Trump is now the presumptive GOP nominee. Is that a good thing for the Biden campaign, especially with polls that did show Nikki Haley actually doing pretty well against the president? Whether it's a good thing or a bad thing for the Biden campaign is, is not really the point. I think the point is that Trump was inevitably going to be the nominee in this election no matter what, and now we're just kind of getting out, out of the formalities at this point. But going back to your question about Nikki Haley, you know, Trump can bring Nikki Haley back into the fold. The issue is, can he bring Nikki Haley voters back into the fold? The New York Times did a poll about this recently and found out that many of Nikki Haley voters were voters who were Republicans, but were Biden voters. They did not want to vote for Donald Trump in 2020. So the question is, if those voters didn't come home in 2020, where are they going to go in 2024? And it's a small percentage of the vote. But remember, states like Arizona and Georgia were decided by less than a point, around a point. And in this case, voters of that magnitude can make a difference. And with Trump heading towards the nomination, Matt, do you think his legal battles could potentially derail his campaign before November? Well, we have to see how it all plays out. He's had a good year on that front because the cases that, that, that his opponents were trying to push to this year have all been either delayed or have had huge problems with them, the Georgia case being the best example of that. Uh, I think it looks less likely now that any of these these uh, four jurisdictions are going to complete their work before the election. We'll have to see. It depends. We have the Supreme Court ruling, I think, in April on the question of immunity. So there's a lot in place there. If there's a conviction, we'll have to see how that affects swing voters. But I think generally the voters understand what's going on here. They have a view about Trump and they have a view about Biden. The election is not going to come down to these legal things. It's going to come down to whether people like the Biden presidency more or they like the Trump presidency more. That's what this election is going to be about. And Ed, on that point, just got a few seconds here. How does Biden change his messaging this year compared to four years ago with some polling showing a lot of people not impressed with his presidency so far. I don't know that it needs to change too much because I think it still comes down to trust. And I'm sorry, Matt, but those criminal charges do make a difference for these swing voters in swing states. 53% of swing voters say they, they're not impressed with these charges at all. And there is a question of trust. Donald Trump not accepting the 2020 election results, uh, questioning whether or not he respects institutions of democracy. What will he do? Will he be a lame duck president or will he try and serve a third term? These are real questions that, of trust that I think voters will have. And I think Biden needs to make that case. Guys, one thing we can agree on, eight months to go, a lot can still happen. Uh, Ed, Matt, <laughs> yeah. thanks so much for being here. We appreciate your perspective. Thank you. Thanks.